Yes, children, good morning. I hope you are all keeping well. Uh, children, yesterday uh, or day before yesterday, we had start, we finished this play Mother's Day after a week long, uh, you know, complete discussion and reading of the play. So today we are going to discuss a few questions, especially the text ones. So the very first question, which this play, you know, has like, how is this play a satire? You know, this very play, you might have all realized that this play is a, like very humorous. Was it humor? Like basically it had, basically the play was all about a serious theme. There was serious theme in the play about the status of women in the status of women in house or in the home. So the status is like not good. Women are disregarded as the servants or they are looked down upon as if they were dirt or something to be treated with disrespect. This is what happens in the play with the woman. So the theme is universal because it doesn't happen just in one house. It doesn't happen just in one country or in one continent. It's something which is universal, right? So, so what happens all around is, and it's something that doesn't happen nice, something that is an exploitation or an injustice that needs to be changed. So the point is when the writer chooses a serious theme to criticize, Okay, theme can be uh, about, about some vice, about some, uh, you know, negative trait of the humanity or of a person. It can be uh, some wrong system. It can be uh, the weakness of the characters or of uh, the humanity. Okay, or it can be about society or it, of the system. When the writer chooses the flaw or weakness of a person or of society or of system to be to criticize it but the end purpose is to reform it then that write up is called as satire so in nutshell i'm ag again explaining if we talk about satire then satire is any any work of write up it's any work it can be a play it can be it can be a poem it can be a story it can be an essay okay so it can it can be an article so it any form of write up where the writer wants to criticize what where the writer wants to criticize what either a person persons, humanities, that is the whole mankind's, or societies, or systems. If there is something wrong with the system, or society, or humanity, or somebody, you know, okay, when the writer wants to criticize any one of them, through what? But how? In a very in humorous, ironical, exaggeration, so the writer wants, how does he criticize? In a very humorous manner. Okay, the writer doesn't uh, become very serious when he's writing a satire. Though the theme is serious, the topic he picks up is serious, but he remains very hu humorous or in a light-hearted tone. He adopts humorous, that is light-hearted tone. Ironical. What is ironical? What you say, you exactly mean the opposite later on. Irony is what you say, but, but actually you mean it exactly the opposite. For example, in the beginning of the play, we find that Mrs. Uh, uh, Pearson, she was saying that uh, uh, she, she loves her family a lot and doesn't want any unpleasantness. 
so she is not able to take uh, the initiative she is not able to make her children do what she wants but in the end we find her we find that uh, she gets what she wants okay she wants the she wanted that her children should do something in the kitchen and she with her husband would be sitting and uh, and having some talk so that happens in the end so the irony is what you say in the beginning but later on the action or the events are exactly the opposite so exaggeration is when you go a little bit far when you go cross the limit when you mean something simple but you do it in an exaggerated manner the play you know involves so many instances of exaggeration and you people will only be telling me like exaggeration is when i simply want to say that uh, uh, you've done very bad you know i if suppose i want to say that you you've done very bad but i say wow you've done something great why don't i uh, give you the title of the uh, uh, the king of this place why don't i announce you be the king of the place so in order to criticize you when i adopt uh, ironical humor that is exaggeration also when i exaggerate upon the things or even the better example is suppose you've done uh, you've got uh, you've done something bad and i say yeah wow you've gr- you've got uh, uh, you've done wonderfully well it is excellent so when i exaggerate upon the things okay so it can be positively also if you've done good if you've scored good marks uh, but not say though that good but your performance is not that good but i say wow you've really uh, proved your metal you've really uh, done me proud i'm proud of you so that is also exaggeration when the appreciation doesn't mean to be that much right so here uh, the problems in this play the problems were mrs pearson had one problem we know and uh, the exaggeration can be for example uh, they both change uh, personalities right mrs pearson becomes mrs uh, uh, fitzgerald and she becomes the opposite through uh, through the magic the abracadabra and all so that was all exaggeration so this exaggeration adds to what humor and humor is a soul of satire so if there is no humor if there is no humor there cannot be any satire the very the soul of satire is its humor but mind it this humor in a satire should not be uh, cheap kinds it should not be a slapstick humor it should not be a very uh, vulgar humor the humor is you know uh, it becomes the soul of the play through irony okay so remember irony and exaggeration they become intrinsic part of that humor so the, these things make the humor become a little you know settled one it becomes a humor which is you know interspersed in the play but it doesn't uh, overtake the theme of the play okay though we people were laughing in in between the play we had fun when we were reading the play but no where we got uh, lost from the main content main theme of the play throughout the play we were concerned about the status of of mother in the family throughout i guess no when when mrs pearson was gaining momentum in the play when children were being uh, you know uh, when children were made to realize like how wrong they had been then i guess we as readers were able to we were happy then why were we happy because because the humor was upon the children and the, that humor made us realize that yes mother is right now and that uh, kind of you know treatment uh, the what mother is doing that is right so we were with mother because she was being exploited and she was gaining the momentum in the play and that and that was all through humor irony and exaggeration is that clear so this very play is a perfect satire because number 1 if it talks about the criticism then it criticizes the uh, degradation in the status of women in home or in the society or it's about uh, the way the woman is disrespected so the play criticizes the disrespect the woman gets in each home it criticizes this and it this criticism is through a well placed story of 
what we have already read in this in the play so it is through a story of mrs pearson who is mother the one who was not getting the due respect from her children or from her family but eventually with the help of her friend mrs fitzgerald she is able to regain her status as mother or as wife in the family right so that was a story so criticism of the status of woman in the family through a story of mrs pearson but all this is done in a very humorous manner throughout the story throughout the play the playwright the tone of the playwright is very light he uses light hearted humor which is full of irony and exaggeration so when it comes to humor then we can give some examples like where does the writer go humorous for example in the very beginning when mrs fitzgerald uh, tells mrs pearson that she would uh, become mrs pearson and mrs pearson was not able to understand like how could mrs fitzgerald be uh, mrs pearson she said i thought you wanted you wanted to be mrs pearson so mrs fitzgerald said yes this is what i mean i meant and it would be through the magic so these uh, was th th these you know this situation when she was not able to understand exactly what she was saying then she said yes i want to be mrs uh, i want to be you and you will become me so then they both exchange personality and the use of that magic abracadabra and all that was all humorous and afterwards when mrs uh, pearson says now what will i do uh, mrs fitzgerald says like you will uh, live life as mrs fitzgerald and uh, you'll have more fun than you will have more fun as me than you ever had in your life that was also very humorous humorous doesn't just means that makes you go into uh, peals of laughter humor means something which creates a tone a bit less serious right so uh, in between when uh, uh, doris comes the way mrs uh, pearson calls charlie spencer's buck teeth and half witted it was all humorous and uh, even when serial comes uh, and then brother and sisters they were talking about if mother has gone bami if mother has gone uh, hit her heads with something these things are all humorous but hinting at how children treat their mothers when mothers don't play uh, as their servants so right so in between when husband uh, husband comes this very mrs pizarro tells her tells him that you are being called as pompey ompey pearson that was also humorous so there are so many circumstances in the play which make this play a where there are you know uh, so many examples of humor and all those humorous incidents are are hinting at the status of woman in the family or or what or the theme of the play right so irony is i've already told you irony is what you say but exactly the opposite happens in the end so in the very beginning mrs pearson you know she had been pointing out that uh, uh, it's very difficult for her to take initiative right but in the end we see that uh, instantly she is able to take the initiative the moment she switches back to her original self she is able to tell her family like she wants this to be done for her okay so switching over from what she was and to switching over to like what she has become that is ironic because she was saying that she was uh, she never wanted to create unpleasantness she never wanted uh, uh, she could not take initiative but she could do this in the end though maybe uh, she had the support of her friend mrs fitzgerald but but in the end it is she only who is managing it on her own right so then uh, uh, the irony is like uh, the everybody does goes for 8 hour a day okay mrs fitzgerald who had become mrs pearson she points out to doris that uh, that all people have 8 hours a day those who are working okay those who work they go for 8 hour a day and if there is some problem they go for strike so this is ironic this is humorous also and this is you know something which is raising uh, uh, which is criticizing the system of the society also okay i've told you like I, satire is a write up where a writer wants to where a writer criticizes the uh, criticizes the system 
okay if there is something wrong with the system the writer criticizes it so the idea how the workers go on strike when something they don't like that is something also that is also you know a criticism of the system so when we say like what what are the issues this play talks about or comments upon then there are so many issues it's just not about mother's status of mother in a family okay so when we'll be discussing this question a bit separately also like what are the issues this play discuss so this play discusses no yeah the major theme is the status of women in the house or in the family there are so many other issues another such issue which we have just now discussed is like it is about like how uh, how the workers go on strike when something they don't like so going on strike at uh, at the slightest of you know objection is also you know something to be criticized okay that is not not how the system will work so the union the, uh, the workers those who have unions it's okay that there should be the unions of the workers because those unions uh, you know make sure that the workers are not exploited it's okay but yes when there are some rights are given then uh, those very things you know are taken uh, as uh, a negativity also so those very things you know adopt a negativity when they don't work efficiently so we were talking about irony irony is what you say and exactly the opposite happens so they are like mother was pointing out like how the workers how the workers work for 8 hours outside and if something is not done as per their desire they go for strike but this rule will happen in family also and she as mother has will also adopt the same weapon of of working for 8 hours and if she is asked for something else if she is exploited she will also go for a strike what strike she will not work that is her strike if she will not be thanked if she will not be appreciated for what she does then she will also go for strike and she will not do anything so that was right right so exaggeration we have already discussed like in order to get the desired effect in the play because it's a play it's a drama so drama is you know presenting a slice of life uh, through different situations through different characters so that drama of life this drama can become more you know effective or dramatic when there is a use of exaggeration otherwise this drama would become very boring if the things are very normal in the play also so in order to catch or in order to capture the attention of the readers or of the audience the writer has used exaggeration in the form of use of magic in the form of uh, the women exchanging their personalities so in the form of high uh, uh, high sounding you know dialogues for example mr uh, pearson he was shouting at the top of his voice when he came right so all those things uh, you know all those exaggerations ironies and and humorous elements make the play become a perfect satire right is that right so when you point out like how this play is a satire you will first of all tell what satire is then you will point out like how this play is a satire because there is a perfect combo of humor irony and exaggeration right okay then you are to give examples also of humor irony and exaggeration in between now see this question this play written in 1950s is a humorous and satirical depiction of the status of mother in the family you all agree and you will be conveying explaining what it this so this very part you will first explain when you are going to answer first part or second part so how is it a humorous and satirical depiction of the status of mother in the family that you will explain first that i have also explained right now then the question is what are the issues it raises okay so what are the issues it raises this is the first part in the first part whatever i have discussed right now that you will discuss okay but many of the children you know what they do for them this is this happens to be a statement and they don't feel like giving explaining this at all this straight away come to the first part like what are the issues it raises so there you people will get marks deducted so first you explain the uh, statement like how is it a satirical depiction of the status of women in her family now the question is what are the issues it raises 
so this play raises with uh, so many other social uh, issues for example first issue the foremost issue is the status of women in the family what are the other issues can you people now point out what are the other issues the play raises you people can raise hand and speak up come on apart from the status of women in the family what else yes come on raise hand otherwise i will ask anyone come on better is you people raise hand so no hand up yet chirag ahuja give answer chirag yes yes chirag yes arshdeep singh mannat will give answer good morning ma'am yes good morning mannat yes mannat ma'am uh, uh, another another issue that uh, that is raised in this place that mm. we should respect others like uh, mm. like the children were disrespecting their neighbors hmm uh, mrs farjal yes we should not behave like this okay we should respect them okay so the another issue very good issue also like it's about the respect each respect each relation deserves so it's about respecting each relation not just about mother not just about father it's about each and everybody whomsoever we come across right okay what else okay now arshdeep singh roll number 7 roll number 6 you also raise hand arshdeep singh arshdeep singh roll number 7 yes ma'am ah, good morning good morning ma'am yes good morning yes arshdeep what are the other issues the play raises ma'am the other issues that the play raises uh, are that uh, uh the workers uh, take advantage of their rights uh, if uh, their demands are not met even slightest uh, they give, go on strikes and revolts okay okay so another issue the play discusses is the uh, labor uh, labor laws labor laws or uh, about their working hours or the kind of unions so though these unions or these laws are for their benefit but these things are exploited to meet their ends okay okay but yes the but things is these things are not wrong in themselves they are very much required because they safeguard their rights but uh, but instead of uh, sometimes these very labor laws or these very you know unions are there to exploit the others others um, the flip side of the coin also okay yashika Roll number forty-three. Okay, Pragati has raised hand. Yes, Pragati. Ma'am, this play also raises the issue that people actually lead fake lives. Yes. Because in this play, repeat please. Ma'am, this play also raises the issue that people actually lead fake lives. Hmm. people assume that they are enjoying themselves but actually hmm. they are not uh, yes. as in the case of uh, uh, mr pearson hmm. they uh, he used to go to the club every evening but he didn't know that everyone mocks uh, him at the club hmm. uh, same is the case with cyril and doris hmm. yes 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 very right good point so the way people live fake lives and why do they uh, why do they live fake lives because they don't uh, realize the importance of simple and family life 
simple family life is better than all sorts of other lives okay so very good example mr cesarel he had been uh, he thought like he was living a good life thereby going to club had so much of fanfare had so many friends social circle and all but uh, th these kinds of social circles are all fake because uh, what those people think about you you never know the point is like uh, it's not like it may not be right with everybody what happened with mr uh, you know person but the fact is like nothing is better than one's own family life okay so people like leave their families even the children the teenagers uh, they go out on their birthdays thereby leaving their families keep kept waiting till night the families keep on waiting for their children to come back and uh, cut cake but children you know they keep on uh, remaining outside with their friends till late evenings and the family the grandparents they keep on waiting for the children to come back and uh, and all so better is like go for your simple family life because that is the that is best nothing can uh, equal it yes pragati good point it was yes anyone else or anything else pragati what are the other issues the play raises don't you think it's also about the role of neighbors role of neighbors what actually happens the neighbors keep on poking at they keep on keeping an eye on uh, what is happening in their neighbor they just keep on uh, having complete information of the of their neighbors and neighbors always have complete information but the fact is the real role is the real role is what mrs pizzal does she has all the knowledge about what serial does of uh, about what doris is doing about what is happening with mrs pearson or what is happening with mr pearson she could also have been uh, she could also have remained out and made kept on making fun of the whole family which usually the neighbors do but she comes and uh, takes active part in sorting out the problem of the family so that is what the real neighbors role should be okay so the so here the writer you know he might have made fun of the neighbors but here the neighbor turns out to be the ideal one okay role of neighbors then what what else has he uh, uh, you know writer pointed out come on yes children raise hand amritpal yes amritpal jatin 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 yes you are always there hmm so your mic mic is still not working please make arrangements properly gursirath roll number 18 yes ma'am yes good sirat what are the other issues the play raises ma'am about extremely spoiled children who don't respect anybody okay that is somewhat related to mother's role okay status of mother so when we talk about status of mother then we, there also we can point out the same thing what else yes yes uh, we can use your point like this like if this play talks about uh, giving uh, proper due proper status or you can say justice to mother at the same time it's also about how how mother should groom their family it's also about grooming family okay grooming children or even it's also about grooming the children so if the children were spoiled if the children were not able to respect their mother then its discredit would go to the mother only then mother was to be blamed for this mrs pearson okay so the children should be groomed in such way that they should become 
not only responsible uh, responsible respectful independent right so the grooming should be such that the children with age keep should become responsible respectful and independent they should be able to manage themselves well if you people are not able to manage your own things on your own then uh, you can you can understand what i mean okay respectful you okay children should be respectful to each and everybody in the society not just to mother here respectful is for everybody okay then responsible you the children should be responsible for their own actions okay if they do good good if they are not doing good even then they are responsible for their own actions and that is what the the grooming goes in for the mother should groom the mother should bring up her children in such a way that the children finally should become these three okay so when they will be responsible they will bother for their studies they will bother for their work they will bother for their hygiene they'll bother for the, for everything which ever comes around them okay so these things come side by side so mother is responsible for the grooming of the children so here the the play also raises a big question on how children must be groomed and brought up so here when i say grooming children then even about husbands so the whole family also i mean like how the whole family should be treated that the whole family remains respectful uh responsible and independent no one should be dependent upon anyone if the women have made such a system in the house like uh, no one is able to manage without them then it's their mistake is it's that clear clear so the women should also know how to let their family become responsible respectful and independent so that's it we'll be discussing these questions tomorrow again uh, okay